I'm a big fan of something called the Marshmallow Test. In 1968, an academic from Stanford University took 600 kids between the ages of four and six and using just a packet of marshmallows was able to work out which of those would go on to have a greater future income, a stronger personality, greater levels of success. How can marshmallows tell you that about a kid, Dr. Carl? Okay, so he's got the kids, right? And he has their arch friend, the marshmallow. Mm -hmm. He then puts them in a room, one at a time, with the marshmallow. And then he says, well, you can, well, here's your two choices, kiddo. You, young child, for age four to six, you can eat that marshmallow immediately. Second choice. If you have the patience to wait for 15 minutes, I'll come back in the room, because you're in there by yourself, and I will give you two marshmallows. Now, when he conducted the experiment, a small minority of the students had finished the marshmallow before they'd even had the rules explained. <laughs> the majority waited, but couldn't wait for the 15 minutes. They attempted to wait and failed. The vast majority waited. The vast majority failed. Here's a simulation of the marshmallow test done more recently. Okay, sit in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. But stay in here and stay in the chair till I come back, okay? All right. Just watch a group of four to six-year-old kids try not to eat a marshmallow for 15 minutes. Oh, I accidentally bumped it. Oh, accidentally. Oh, my mouth opened near it. Don't I've sniff it. Don't sniff it, dude. <laughs> my forehead, it hit it. I love, I love these guys coming up. <laughs> Is it really a marshmallow? I love the twins. One of them's just concussing himself every 10 seconds, so he forgets there's a marshmallow there. She's gone. Oh. He's got the lips in the wrong order. Oh. You can't kiss it. He's trying so hard. Oops. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. She didn't even bother. <laughs> Nobody will ever notice. He's trying so hard, this kid. <laughs> so he did this initial survey, and what did he find out from there? Well, here's the initial paper from 1969, Cognitive and Attentional Mechanisms in Delay of Gratification, in the journal there. Followed up some 40 years later, looking at behavioural neural correlates of delay of gratification. So what he found was that if the kids could not wait, if they could not wait that 15 minutes over the 40-year window, he found that overwhelmingly behavioural problems, bad at school, uni work, got fatter, jail, arrested, personal problems, drugs. And then this leads on to the second very important factor which has also come out of this research. With regard to success at school, at university, at home, there are a few factors that are important. Helps to have the smarts, helps to be able to delay the gratification and watch the TV later. In fact, delaying the gratification is two times as important as having the smarts. I see so many people coming into my office who are so smart, and yet they can't put their horsepower down to the ground, they're just spinning the wheels. And there's another example of where they do better if they wait. In America, they have a university admission exam called the SAT. The maximum you can get is 2,400. Comparing the kids who could wait 15 minutes with the kids who could wait only 30 seconds, they got 200. They got nearly 10% better just because they could wait. This has profound implications, this survey. Michael Spence is here, the vice chancellor of the university. And I know from my time vice chancellor when I was on the university senate, the whole process of university admissions is remarkably complicated. You've got HSCs, you've got TERs, you've got equivalent subjects, you've got bonus marks for certain things. There's the first round of offers, there's the second round of offers. A certain percentage of students drop out at the end of the first year. It costs millions of dollars to administer year upon year upon year. Michael Spence, I present you with a $2.50 bag of marshmallows 
I've just saved you $25 million, Vice-Chancellor. 